Niccolò Paganini, arguably the greatest violinist who ever lived, was unlucky when it came to gambling, and never took any chances with the tone or performance of his instrument. Without this secret, musicians can ruin the finest set of strings before ever playing their first note. Yet with this secret, your strings can last longer and sound better than otherwise possible. Let's begin with the most valuable technical information about your violin that you may ever learn. The finest bridge begins with the finest maple, aged to perfection. Yet instead of deep flames, plain maple is chosen with distinct mark straw for its stability, strength, and tone. To create a bridge blank, the eyes, heart, arms, and legs are carved to the shape perfected by Antonio Stradivari. Yet there are many sizes and shapes of instruments, and each requires their own fitted bridge. This includes cutting the feet to perfectly match the arching of the belly. The thickness of the bridge determines the volume and response, while the arching holds the strings at their proper heights above the fingerboard. Shallow notches are filed into the top of the bridge before the grooves are burnished to a depth of slightly less than one-half the diameter of each string. This initial burnishing requires a lot of pressure and is accomplished by the violin maker using special burnishers with a polished radius slightly smaller than each string. These compress and harden the wood in the grooves for a smooth, firm fit. As you can see in this first drawing, the profile of each groove is angled down slightly toward the tailpiece, so the bridge holds the strings tightest on the fingerboard side. This eliminates buzzing, while a small radius formed at each end prevents the windings of the strings from snagging and breaking. A thin layer of graphite is then worked into this hardened surface to provide for the smoothest tuning possible and the purest tone imaginable. At the same time, a bridge must have the same angle of clearance between the strings under the bow, so those impossible crossover passages can be played evenly with the least amount of effort. When these angles are identical, the distance from the top of the A string above the E and D strings will be the same as from the top of the D string above the A and G strings. The easiest way to check this relationship is to view the strings from the side and verify that the two heights are the same. The grooves in the nut are just as important as the bridge and must be filed, burnished, radiused, and graphited to hold the strings at a height of about one half their diameter above a properly scooped fingerboard. Don't feel bad if you have to review this information a couple times, or pause on each of the drawings. As important as all of this information is to your ultimate success, most of these details have been traditionally reserved for the masters. But even if you don't replace your own strings, or do any of the maintenance yourself, no musician can have the confidence of Paganini until they know for themselves that their bridge and nut have been properly carved and cared for. The best news is, after verifying that your instrument has been properly set up, your part is easy. Every time you replace a string, lightly reburnish and graphite the grooves of the bridge and nut while following these rules. It's best to have a pencil with a long tapered tip. 
and always keep the diameter of the lead that comes in contact with the groove smaller than the diameter of the string. Carefully follow the profile of the groove as firmly yet smoothly as possible with the side of the lead while being careful not to break the pencil or slip out of the groove. Even though you can use an eraser to lighten the mark, it will still show on a fine bridge. Don't wipe off the excess graphite after sharpening the pencil each time. This fine dust works into the pores of the wood and lubricates it even better. Landmark and steady your hands for each position, and most of all, get comfortable. Also, turn the violin around so you can coat the small radius on the other end of the bridge groove also. If you follow these rules, you should be successful your very first time. When finished with a groove in the bridge, repeat the operation on the nut, and, as a reminder, Remove and replace only one string at a time, or the sound post inside your violin may fall. When you're satisfied that the grooves of the bridge and nut are smooth and lightly coated with graphite, blow off the excess dust, wash your hands, and replace the string with all the confidence in the world. The real secret is, every time Paganini broke a string, Thank you.